Hey everybody, I'm Abba. And I'm Angie. And, and we, we are Hippie, Hippie Nerd, Nerd Family. Family. So good to see everybody. We hope that you all are doing well. For those of you all who do not know, we have exited Belize, okay? Yes, and we've compiled five reasons why we absolutely had to leave Belize. Now, let's get to it. Let's go. <laughs> So today, like we said, we are talking about the top five reasons we exited Belize, okay? Now look, if you go anywhere to visit, it is okay if when you get there, you decide that this may not necessarily be the place for you and you want to head to your next destination. Do not get down on yourself for making that choice yeah. because that's something that we did, okay? Yeah. So, you know, like going to Belize, like, you know, we knew that it was a paradise. We knew that that there were so many qualities of oh, Belize yes. that we wanted to tap into. But at the same time, there's not a lot of um, things online to where you can really get the real deal mm -hmm. about Belize. Like, there's not a lot of people that's, like, really telling you the ins and outs. So you have to kind of, like, learn once you get on the ground there. So let's go ahead and get into it. Number five. Yes. The landing pad. The landing pad. And when we say landing pad, we mean like when you come somewhere, the first place that you stop, that kind of influences your attitude about the entire place and your entire experience. Yeah, so like like basically what happened with us is um, we had an idea of where we wanted to go and everything before we went to Belize. But we just so happened to know somebody that lived in um, a town called Punta Gorda. So we never really known anything about Punta Gorda. Actually, everything we looked up about Punta Gorda was just like very um, low quality videos and stuff like that. We couldn't find any good information. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this person recommended Punta Gorda and it was the absolute worst recommendation that somebody could ever give to a small family. A big family. A big family. You know, like, um, and there was just like a whole lot of things that was not considered or wasn't checked or verified. And it cost us thousands of dollars just, just from that misinformation. So landing pad is very important because wherever you land in Belize is going to shape your experience there That's right. and we just so happen to land in the bad place for us um and i'm not trying to you know say anything bad about punta gorda what i do want to say about punta gorda is that you know um i met a few characters there that were pretty cool but i met a lot mm. of characters there that were just they that weren't cool let's just say that number four Number four is progressiveness. So so with the progressiveness, we're, we're speaking of, you know, um, say for instance, the technology, the internet, yes. the the stores, the the, in, the integrity, you know, like when people, let, let's, let's just start at the internet. So the internet is very iffy, you know, some places you can get it really good, some places you can't get it. Um, there's not, um, you can't get data every single place you go in Belize, and that makes it hard for a digital nomad. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, you know, that's one thing, and you can work around it, you can find really good places and stuff like that. There are places that, that you can go or whatever, and it'll work out, but then there's a lot of places where it's just dead space, where it's hard for you to get any internet, any signal. And and communication. <laughs> wait a minute. And look, don't forget this part. The fact that in a lot of towns, there's only one place where you can go sign up for internet. And there may only be one, and if you're lucky, two people that connect the internet for the whole entire town. So getting your internet turned on, it could take between five to eight business days. But one place where we stayed, it took 21 yeah. business so days. So we didn't have internet for 20 days. 21 days. The internet yeah. was part of our lease so so for the first 20 days we didn't have no internet at all mm -hmm. okay so with the stores right if you look at all the stores it's kind of like a big flea market mm -hmm. and there's no actual stores like uh walmart jewels no. kroger public no um target there's nothing like that nowhere to be found and then we can talk about the integrity so as far as the integrity like when you see people building and and um, painting and uh, doing things of that nature. It's just like people don't fully do it right the first time. And that to me is like 
a way of costing more money just because like you have to double double back on it everything that you do. It costs more money. It costs more money. So it's like it's kind of like a waste of time and space because the first time you do it, you do it super lazy. Like like we have like some pictures in our home, right? I'm just gonna show you here where you know you can see how people treat their job. So this door almost really injured my son because wow. just like everything else in this in this house it's like put on so poorly look at this they got one screw in there they got one screw right here and this door like almost injured my son if, if my son wasn't fast enough if my son wasn't fast enough this would have hit him dead in the middle of his head like because it almost hit him and still hit his shoulder he is. I mean, so it did hurt him, and this thing is like heavy. And look, look how high it is for one. It, it's it, it's heavy. So this is just another example of how things are done so poorly the first time, and that's why I can't be in an environment like this. Like, look at this. One damn screw. They didn't have no more screws, or did, was somebody just that damn lazy? How are these people getting paid? You know? And you know what, but I think that's part of the thing is that it is how are they getting paid because are they getting paid the wages that would require them to do it right the first time? Yeah. Or are they being paid and they're just like, ah, oh, let me just slap this together real quick or let me or does take it, this or can halfway any, done. <laughs> or can anybody just qualify to be a handyman? I think, for real, after our experience, I think anybody can qualify to be a handyman, but that's what we're talking about, about the integrity of something. When you do things with integrity, you understand the value of doing it right the first time, because guess what? That saves time, and time saves money. For our family, it's hard for us to surround ourselves around a lot of people that have low integrity. Like, it's, it's hard for us to do that, especially with the way that we're trying to raise our children. You know, like, we want people yes. who, we want our children to understand how to do something, how to complete something, and move on from That's it. That's right, how to complete a task, how to go on. Don't just end with the first step of the task. Complete it the whole way through. But see if it everybody, all the way through. See it through, right? Mm -hmm. But if everybody around you is just like doing whatever, that develops a do whatever kind right. of mentality, right. and that's not how we're raising our children. Number three, hidden fees. Oh my gosh, number three is hidden fees. So we did a video a while back um, where we actually uh, had 10 things that they, do, they don't tell you about Belize, mm -hmm. and you can check that right here. So one of the hidden fees that we didn't know about until we hit the ground was that we have to pay $100 per person all the way down to the baby mm -hmm. and that's usd per month just yes. to be in belize just to breathe the air so, y'all so a family of seven you can already imagine you know that's 700 dollars usd, USD 1400 dollars bz yep. a month just to be there mm -hmm. you know a lot of places they will allow maybe like 90 days for you to yes, kind of like will. come there and be there and and, and fill out the place or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like, as soon as you go to Belize, you're paying every single month. Yep. Like, you're, like before you can, can even figure out anything about Belize, you have to pay Belize. You don't even really know what all is there. You don't know what you like. You don't know what you don't like. You don't, you have no time really to assess anything to say, okay, well, you know what? I think I want to go ahead and do my residency. I think I want to gain residency here. You know, yeah. you really have no time to make those kinds of choices and decisions before it's like, yeah. Pay up. And then you have to remember, too, wherever you're going, what are they known for? Because that will tell you where your pockets are really going to get hit. Mm -hmm. Belize is known for tourism. Yeah. Tourism is how they bring in their coins. Mm -hmm. So everything that has to do with tourism mm -hmm. and expats, they are going to charge because that's where they make their money. Right. A lot of their food and produce is imported. A, a lot of things are imported in. So they depend on tourism to bring in the dollars that they need. Exactly. Exactly. So another charge, this is some expenses that you don't really think of, mm -hmm. is the taxi. Like every yeah. single day we spent $50 for a taxi. Yes. Every single day. Without um, no breaks. Because well, like well, you have to eat, you have to get around, you have to do everything you have to do. It's not like you can just go down there and buy a car. 
You can either rent a car or you can use a taxi, and we use the taxi all the time. Um, it would have been cheaper than um, renting an actual car. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so even if you live like, let's say you live five um, five minutes outside of the actual town, so they'll charge you twenty dollars to come from town to where you are, even if it's five minutes. And then it's six dollars per stop. So let's say you drop six dollars per stop within the town. Within the town, yes. Yeah. So let's say you need to stop by the laundry man. Let's say you don't even know your way around town yet. And you're like, look, I need to go to the bank. I need to go to the laundromat, and I need to go grab a bite to eat. Okay, well now that's taxed on eighteen dollars. But because you don't know the town, you don't realize yeah, like, that everything is literally right here. And, and then the taxi driver is not gonna tell you, hey, uh, you heck just no. Walk right here to right here and it'd be like two minutes exactly they're gonna drive you to every single spot <laughs> yes they're gonna drive you to every but, um, single spot and they're gonna take that 18 to 24 dollars and then you have to pay another 20 dollars to get from where your last location is back to your house so it's very easy for you to spend over 60 dollars in just a taxi every day yeah number two the people the people and we're not just talking about local people y'all we're talking about the expats we're talking, too. we're talking about the expats <laughs> too the people who have left america i don't know if they were running from something or yeah. what yo we what? <laughs> we just so happened to meet like the worst group of people i like I, i'm just go ahead and say it from beginning to end we were just meeting bad person after bad oh person after God. bad person and i don't know what happened? I mean, I do know what happened. We were just steered in the wrong direction. And because we were steered and in the wrong direction, you know, and we depended on somebody else versus our own uh, our own thing that we've been depending on for the last 15 years, yeah. we just took, we took a leap of faith and depended on the wrong person. Well, we and got our information from what we thought was a viable source, but was not a viable source in any way. Exactly. So. Like every, almost everything that this person has told us has been misinformation. And once you get one piece of misinformation, it can take you down a rabbit hole because then you get steered the wrong direction constantly until, yeah. you know, I you really, come out of it. I really low key feel like the person made us lose thousands of dollars you know no. just by by misinformation yeah. you know this what i'm saying not what you said like at all and now it's us and our five children trying to figure our way through this and still see the sunlight you know exactly. what i'm saying like still see the positive in everything so when it comes down to the people we want to say be careful who it is that you listen to um be careful how they are presenting the information like listen to what they say and what they don't say okay mm -hmm. um but with the people what i want to say too as far as the expats and the locals mm -hmm. you as soon as your voice comes out yeah as soon as they hear your voice you're getting overcharged. You're getting overcharged for anything. I'm, I'm going to say this. Like, there's been so many people that, like, a smile in your face. Oh, you have such a beautiful family. They do all of the, the, the smiling and dancing and all of that stuff. But they will charge the mess out of you as soon as you're done with the conversation. They're mm -hmm. going to try to charge mm -hmm. everything that they can to you to get whatever kind of come up. Because they automatically think that we're rich just because we're from the U.S. Yep. And that's that's a, a hassle when it's like when you're approached by that on every front, you know. Everywhere you go. And that's go. expats too. That's, that's, that's locals and, and expats mm -hmm. because like it's almost like a mentality of... As soon as some fresh meat comes comes in, everybody wants to sink their teeth yep. into the fresh meat, and that's and the expats are just as worse. Like they have agendas and things too, and it's like very easy to see that they have an agenda. Everybody talks; they do a lot of talking, and if you just be quiet and listen, they'll tell their whole story, and then you can like pretty much understand mm -hmm. what their angle is. That's one thing I do notice about small town type people you know like they're not exposed to enough people to really know how to hide their agenda oh yeah nobody really hides well like i wouldn't trade the experience for anything in the world like um my children have gotten a lot out of this yeah. out of out of the whole out of our struggles we've gotten a lot oh, out of yeah. this it made us just stronger as people and as a family or whatever we would just steer the wrong direction oh, wow. and we and we take account we we take accountability oh for, for everything we're not that we we're do. not blaming nobody else but ourselves 
because we've been depending on ourselves for 15 years. So the one time we, we take ourselves out the equation, then that's when we messed up. There's a slogan um, in Belize and it is called Go, go slow. slow. So when you say go slow to somebody like me, that means that you are still going. You might not be moving as fast because you're taking your time, you're assessing the things around you, but and you're, you're not, still and getting you're not things stressing done. yourself out. You're not stressing yourself out, but in the meantime, you're still getting things done, right? Yeah, it's kind of like the row, row, row your boat mentality. Yeah. Like gently down a stream but you still rowing the boat yeah your boat's still moving i think some people taking the go slow mentality to the next level of taking just it too far not away. doing anything you know what i'm saying like or waiting on somebody mm -hmm. to give you an answer mm -hmm. or you know not being aggressive in any way shape or form feel like you don't have to find the answers for things and it's like no nah, man like that's not that's not how it goes we're here to the number number one, one thing. reason and some of y'all may say say different or whatever some of y'all might not like this but it is true to us because this is what our family is all about come on now babe let's say it food, food. Yo. Food was the number one That's the reason, number we, one had reason to leave we had to leave. We were becoming malnourished in Belize. Not that they don't have meat and potatoes in Belize. We just don't eat meat and potatoes. We don't eat meat. We don't eat, eat a whole lot of starches. But we were subject to Ooh. eat rice and beans for 60 days in Belize. Come on, y'all. Every man. single day rice and beans that's just like before we came to belize we were eating like superheroes i never come ate to rice belize, really we eating rice and stew beans every, every single day. day and you just don't understand how how your body changes when you go from eating like a superhero to eating starches mm. every day mm. like because it takes 30 days for your for your body to replenish your cells from the food that you ate for the previous 30 days so imagine how we were feeling 30 days in, like it's a total culture mm. shock to our bodies. So, um. Body is like, what in the world is happening? What am I supposed to do with this that you have in here? <laughs> exactly. what, are, what are we replenishing? What are we making anything yeah. from? And a lot of people look at me in my side now and think that, like, um, yeah, you couldn't have been eating like a superhero. It's untrue. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I started at 405, mm -hmm. and right now I'm 254. Come on now. Like, that's a that's a, that's a lot. That's a big accomplishment. Yes, it is. I lost a whole person. You know, I lost so a, a whole person. Yes. And um, and I've been eating a certain way, and I've, I've become accustomed to eating a certain way. And for the last 60 days, we've had to compromise our, our, our own immunity. Yep just to be able to eat. We couldn't go to the restaurants. The restaurants didn't have a whole lot of vegetarian uh, or options, vegan yeah. or plant-based options. At all. Matter of fact, some of them looked at us like we was crazy. Like, 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 what? like people were just like, like, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But that's how we eat. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's how we shape our family. We shaped our family through food. So food is extremely important to us. And when you go to the stores, all you can, all we could buy are old chips. Like the stores have like all old food that's just getting ready to expire. Yeah, and you it's taste, stale. You taste the staleness in mm -hmm. every single thing mm -hmm. you eat. Um, but all we could depend on was like corn chips, <laughs> like Fritos, because they only has three ingredients. Yep. Um, and some Pringles. And everything was like mad old. So, and regular Pringles without cheese or nothing like that. But everything was mad old. We would never subject ourselves to eat these things, but we had to do it for the last 60 days to survive. So that just reminded us how people, even here in America, you know, when you live in a health food desert, that's what we call it, a health food desert. When you live somewhere like that, you do not have options. <laughs> To, to these different foods that are able to nourish your body. Now, even on top of the food thing, we were getting bit by these bugs that were called noceums. Mm -hmm. Now, if you get so many bug bites, that means that what well, your immunity is going to diminish and it's going to decrease. And if you're eating food that does not nourish the body, you have these bug bites which are taken away from you and you have the fact that your cells do not have the nourishment that they need to replenish the body, right? Yeah. So now you're dealing with 
sickness. Now you're dealing with illness. Now you're dealing with inflammation, cramps, inflammation, soreness, aches, pains, like this mucus. Is, and we like, forgot about these like, things. I forgot what it feels like to have like <laughs> phlegm in my throat. We you forgot know, like, about these like, things. What? This is like bananas. Like, it, it. but you know what's so crazy? Like some, like a lot of people have learned how to live with inflammation, how to and deal mucus, with it, and a and whole lot like, of mucus and, and all these different ailments, and then it becomes a part of your day to day life, and you don't even realize that you're sick until it's all gone. And like when you remove all of that stuff, and then it comes back, then you're like, oh, Whoa, how did I live with that's that? That's right. If you are watching this video now, like the the important thing is for you to lean on your own intuition. This video was not to downplay the beautiful country of Belize. That's not what this is. It is just to show you our experience and hopefully you can gain some value from what it is that we presented. Because I've been I, we want nothing but the best experience for you. We will hope that y'all want the same thing for us exactly. and the kids. Exactly. Um, but yeah, so just take it um, for what it's worth and apply it where it needs to be applied. And uh, hopefully, you know, we can get great use of information. Right. Yep. So we, we are officially out of Belize and we yes, will we be are. making an announcement for our next destination very soon. We just couldn't take it anymore, Belize. <laughs> and, I, and I mean that in the most positive way <laughs> you can say it. But, you know, like, we, you know, we made a jump and the jump wasn't the best jump. We had a lot of struggles or whatever, you know, but and we're we live and, and we right. learn and we're so happy that so we are home right now. And yes. You know, it's not going to deter us from jumping to another place. So, oh, nothing's so going to deter us from if, if doing you, what it is we want to do. Us to say <laughs> we're not doing this ever again. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, it's been such a pleasure to be able to talk to you all today, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share the video. Yes, please. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below, and we will be sure to answer with the, the best three questions. Yeah, the ones that got the most attention. Yes, the, the ones that got the most votes. If you've gotten the up on your comment, we will go ahead and we'll address those three top comments. Yes, yes. All right, y'all. Peace in the meantime, out. Love. Peace, hair grease, Ooh. all of that stuff. If you're in our family. Do y'all use Ow. hair grease still? Y'all should be using oil. Use oil. Mm -hmm.